Hello and welcome to The Brick News, the weekly show on all things brick building where we talk about set updates and announcements from all the major brands, our new LEGO ideas entries and a few reading recommendations as well. Information is presented as always by setdb.org, the best source for set information on the internet. And this is where we are actually going to go. As always, we will start with set updates in alphabetical order. Starting with uh, Blue Bricks, um, the local Central European uh, brand from over here. And um, the first announcement is the 108487, the Ruined Tower, kind of a medieval castle like building. It's going to have 2,879 pieces. It's part of the Blue Brick special line, so we do expect Kuhn Long pieces and uh, no prints, no stickers, as is common for this uh, series by Blue Bricks. And yeah, however, it seems to be independent of the rest of the medieval line and as you can see it's more like not really like a castle it's more like a ruin uh, if you will there are also some if you see these glasses here so all this looks like kind of a modern museum kind of style um, like a ruin and not truly an authentic medieval building but more like what is left of it somewhere over here in Europe is my guess um, so if you're into this, into this uh, like you have a modern city and I don't know, you have built out, out a hill or something like that and you need some European style medieval kind of building that you want to put on top, something like that. So for instance, one of the cities where I lived for a couple of years, they had like a hill next to the city as is typical. typical. I mean, obviously these things were usually built on top of hills basically to protect the valley if you will and of course it was easier to defend if it was on top of the hill so if that is your thing and you are looking for something authentic then this could be for you the building itself from a building technique perspective is a bit simple for my taste i must say so the blue bricks medieval line usually has much more complex wall structures with with more interesting snot and also plate work if you will um and maybe a bit of masonry bricks in between maybe a few more colors like dark, dark tan shades sometimes even sand blue stuff like that this here is more like straightforward just brick build and then just a few dark bluish gray uh, plate plates to basically um, improve the look a little bit but nevertheless it looks a bit simple for my taste nevertheless 2879 pieces not too shabby 32 by 32 stats however keep in mind it's not on a base plate but on a 32 by 32 plate something that blue bricks designers do from time to time and then they have um, announced the Restaurante Scooter 108076 I guess the idea is to be kind of an Italian restaurant however it's a pretty small set 440 pieces including the scooter which is more like a three-wheeler um, it's not really like like a regular scooter but nevertheless um, yeah you have a small restaurant kind of a kid set right it's like open in the back um, so that you have easy access can throw in a couple of minifigures quite a simple design but it looks lovely um, I don't know feels a little bit like uh, vacation in Italy and then they have one what they usually I mean they don't put it on the box I do believe but um, I know that at least in Star Trek context they call it a brick buddy it's a similar idea than the brick heads by Lego but they are bigger and they have a different concept behind that so this is the 108465 one of those and yeah I mean they don't have a license so they can't call it alien but strange creature from a sinister world I think that was has a lot of similarity to a certain subtitle of a certain movie and yeah if you look at it it does look like an alien doesn't it anyhow um, I think it's that's okay I mean it's at the end of the day it's just an ugly beast uh, on two legs so I guess that's fine even without a license at least that is my opinion 362 pieces at this point in time just an announcement as always so for those of you who think well it's September so not, let's start thinking about Easter uh, <laughs> this may be for you so we have here the Easter rabbit announcement 108476 this set is going to have 141 pieces and yeah it's a lovely little rabbit you have Easter eggs, everything is there. Quite frankly, I have no idea why they are doing this at this point in time. I mean, they announced their Christmas sets for this season already, like two months ago, I think, if I recall correctly. So maybe this is fine, but yeah, it's a bit too early. I mean, it's tough that first people already start making their Christmas plans, but... Um, 
well, I don't know. I'm I'm not there yet to discuss Easter. Anyhow, if you are missing this summer though already, um, this is a summer parrot, a 108471, maybe for you, 107 pieces for a parrot that has more like, I don't know, it's not really authentic, right? It's more like a comica style. Again, has a certain flavor similar to what what a Lego brickhead would be, I would argue. Uh, roughly uh, four studs by four studs, I think. Um, and yeah, but it looks, um, I don't know, it looks fresh. It looks, it has a nice color scheme. So it looks like fun. And then we have an availability, the first one uh, for today, the fire department bus two in one, 107549. Um, I mean, it's a bus. It is a six stud car. So I don't know, for such a long bus, I think it, six butt studs wide looks a bit weird if you ask me right like very thin like I don't know a bus on a diet but anyhow if you're interested in a vehicle like this it is a two-in-one so the idea is that you have just a regular seated version which however I'm not sure I mean if you look at it it for me it looks like the seats at least the ones in the front are not high enough that you can actually put minifigures in because I mean for those of you I mean you have tried this right if you have a seat like this the only way you can get a minifigure in there is if you get the the arm of the minifigure inside the window panel right because you as you all know, a minifigure, if it's in a seat, it is wider than two studs. The legs are two studs, but the arms are wider than the legs are. So that's why you always need space next to the seat, which is not the case here. So um, personally, it does not look high enough for me. I don't think that this is shoulder height, but I may be wrong here. One way or another, it's going to get be crammed in there, even if you manage to get the minifigures in there. The other alternative, again, it's a two-in-one set, is that you build it in a kind of, I don't know, command station kind of bus with computer workstations and workplaces, etc., etc. Certain Some of the seats have the same issue, I do believe, as the other ones, but at least there's more options to throw minifigures in there. And I don't know if you have like three, four minifigures in there. It makes a lot of a lot more sense to me. All in all, I would argue that this bus uh, should have had maybe two studs more in width. Anyhow, 439 pieces and Blue Bricks is asking for 25 bucks. And then we have the small black hero car. Looks damn familiar like a night industries 2000s anyhow 107472 uh designed by florian and at the end of the day it is a black trans m right with with a red light in front so <laughs> think what you will um it's going to have 182 pieces so it's quite small and blue bricks is asking for 10 bucks and then we have availability of another beer rock castle set um uh, the stables, the 107783, and uh, this is a blue book special that you can use to extend your beer rock line. So, as you can see here, I have started to create also a group called Beer Rock, however, um, I do need to um, add more sets to it. Um, so, going forward, hopefully, you will have I have for Blaustein and Beer Rock, and, and what is the other one called Raven Rock or whatever it is called. My goal is to have also brand or subcategories where all of these lines, if you will, because Bluebox has a lot of them and they can, you know, all be integrated with each other. So, the goal is that I will have set groups for all of them but i still need to work on this but keep an eye out and uh, there should be a beer rock group that should roughly maybe around have around 10 sets going forward anyhow 493 pieces and blue bricks is asking for 28 bucks that's relatively high um for a blue Bricks special um for those of you who come from the lego world this still sounds cheap keep in mind you cannot directly compare these sets with lego because the piece quality is definitely not the same and the packaging is quite simple you don't have building phase um, there are usually never prints in these sets, so they're they're much more like like vanilla or <laughs> basically um, um, more like foundational sets or without all the bells and whistles, if you will. Um, so you can't really compare. Anyhow, usually these sets are more on the like four cents per piece ballpark. This one is a lot more expensive. My guess is because of the horses, but I'm actually not sure why this one is more expensive than the other one. And then we have another train set or historical train set, if you will. It's called the Loot Looted Art Tsar Gold. So this, I think, the second set that they have done uh, like this. This is a 107189. 
and it is a blue brick special. It is running under bricks, so it is kind of a train set, if you will, but it's also a historical set. And yeah, I think there is history behind that between, between you know, after the looted Tsar gold. So if you are into that, into this kind of history or in, into this kind of train, then this set may be for you. We have two vehicles, vehicles in there, a truck and a jeep. And then, of course, the mine train. I don't know how they are precisely called as well. Anyhow, uh, the set uh, does have 1,688 pieces. So that's not too shabby. And Bluebricks is asking for 70 bucks, which is four at one cents a piece. That is exactly what I meant before. And then we have the Steinway Tower. Um, I think this one is in Manhattan, New York. I do believe it's an apartment building. I think some of the most expensive apartments in the world are in this one, if I recall correctly. It's the 107591 by Blue Bricks and uh, designed by Anton, who has done most of the 1 by 500 scale skyscrapers from Blue Bricks. And uh, they are asking for 60 bucks for 1,320 pieces. So the interesting part here is, of course, um, the Steinway Tower itself is ridiculously high and thin, right? And doing this in brick and 1 by 500 scale is for sure not easy. And I think, as you can see, they have done a ton of snot work here. So the big question is, because the pieces that Bluebricks are using are not the most precise one, to say the least. So usually in most buildings, you are fine with them. But in this scenario, the question is, is this thing, at, you know, will this thing turn out to be straight? So that is what I'm actually curious about. But yeah, I don't have the time to build it. Plus, it's going to be horrible to get this one into a camera. <laughs> so I, I kind of uh, re reject. But um, I think this could be interesting. I think it looks amazing. It is a for a one by five hundred skyscraper. It's relatively small, also when it comes to piece count and price. So it's not the biggest investment. So that's all pretty cool. The question is, will this thing, you know, because if it's curved, I think this will not look that good. Anyhow, let's move on. Also available now an American locomotive, I do believe, a GE uh, ES forty four AC in a red bl and black pattern, the one zero seven five eleven. So um, I think this goes very well t together with the US bike goods wagon that we will talk about in a second. This thing uh, has 737 pieces and it's going to cost you 35 bucks, 4.7 cents a piece. So this is a six star train. So one of the smaller ones. Um, but I think, yeah, if you're in the market and you want to have, you know, a big goods, uh, big, big, large train, you know, have maybe two of these and then maybe, I don't know, 20, 30 wagons or cars behind that one. This could be quite amazing. Question is, can you, can you, um, what is the motor situation then? Because I think there are there are a lot of limits in the system, how many wagons or cars you can behind these locomotives. Um, but yeah, here you go. Uh, if that is your cup of tea, uh, just keep in mind, I mean, it has only 737 pieces. It is a blue special. That means uh, usually no building sections and just look on the color distribution. This is basically 527 pieces out of this are black. So you have a lot of black stuff on the table. Just keep that in mind. Not easy to build. Anyhow, um, like I said, they have coming with this uh, is the US Bike Goods Wagon 107514. And um, this one has 411 pieces. I guess a lot of these one by one starts for the coal. I guess it's supposed to be coal. Anyhow, uh, 20 bucks uh, for this wagon, 4.9 cents a piece, a bit on the higher side, especially considering that I think a lot of these pieces, I mean, if you look at it, there's a lot of small stuff in there, like one by one plate in round or regular fashion. Um, so I have no idea why why they're asking for for that price. Anyhow, with that, we're moving on to Kobe. And here we now had in Europe at least with one retailer. Actually, it's again Blue Bricks because they are actually both. They make sets, but they also sell sets of Kobe and other brands. And they had now available for at least since yesterday, but they also have on their shop like a sign that they're almost sold out. So I don't know, maybe they got like a small shipment up front of everybody else. Um, but anyhow, the Money 2 280 TJ, the 1683 by Kobe now available in Europe um, for around 38 bucks. Um, but yeah, um, other retailers like War Bricks in the US or Brickmo in Austria, means also Europe, um, do have it on pre-order still. So I don't know what is going on, why Blue Bricks has them. And, but at the same time, basically from the beginning, we're, we're basically putting on their shop. We don't have many. So I don't know. It was maybe like a pre-shipment or something like that. Anyhow, uh, now available 
uh, for around 40 bucks, basically. And then we have a bit more information, I think, on Panzerhaubitze 2000. So that's Panzerhaubitze is the German word for, oh my god, I'm not an um, army specialist or military specialist, but I guess like self-propelled -pro Haubitze, something like that, um, I guess, is the best. So Panzer is German for tank. And Haubitze is basically the cannon, right? Um, so it's like a cannon on a tank um, or self-propelled cannon, if you will. Anyhow, so this is one of the main artillery, uh, artillery units of the German army. However, it has been a lot in the media in the last two or three years because um, this is something that the Ukraine has been asking for. And they actually got a couple of those last year. And I think they will get another shipment this year. And I think these things have done very well over in the Ukraine in order to allow them to defend of the Russian aggressors. A 2628, however, this is the German version. So there's now two-in-one functionality with Ukraine because this is a collaboration again with the German Tank Museum um, over here in Lower Saxony. And um, yeah, here we go. I think it is uh, a pretty interesting model. I'm personally also highly interested also in the brick situation because basically I think the Panzerhaubitze 2 is, I mean, if you look at the lower chassis, this is basically from the Leopard 2. And the Leopard 2 from Kobe, they have done this already in the same scale. Um, this thing was one of the few Kobe tanks that had a lot of issues with the entire drivetrain and with all the uh, wheels, basically, because they were not turning correctly. Most Kobe tanks do really, really well, like better than almost any other manufacturer. But this one, the Leopard 2, was really well, very well known for having problems there. And I, I built this myself and it had a ton of issues. Basically, they were not moving. You had to use like a knife and, and getting, try to, you had to really go in there and, and work on these to make them spin. And so I'm highly interested, of course, to, to figure out if Kobe has fixed this. Next to that, I think it's quite an interesting model. Um, not Kobe's not making that many modern vehicles. Um, and yeah, here you go. Ah, actually here, I think is what Kobe think it does. Yeah, self-propelled gun, uh, like I said. Again, I'm not really an expert. Anyhow, Panzer Bits 2000, one by 35 scale model. To my knowledge, no minifigures because they are working again because it is modern modern warfare, if you will, and they are working here with the museum. So I guess that's the reason why there's no minifigure included. Um, you can pre-order these for between fifty and seventy bucks, uh, depending on where you live. And then we have also more pictures on the Panzerkampfwagen uh, Six Tiger Ausführung E. Uh, so it's basically the Tiger Tiger Tank. Um, this is the Tiger One. Um, and uh, this is a new executive edition of the enormous 1x12 BMOS. I, this is already the second version or iteration they are doing of this one. It's going to have 8,000 pieces. So don't underestimate this thing. It's 71 centimeters in length. I mean, that's including the cannon, of course. That is like 28 inches. Um, this, is, this thing is huge. It's enormous. And yeah, if that is your cup of tea, like, okay, let's build a tank with 8,000 pieces i think yeah uh war breaks is listing this one for 650 dollars us so this thing is not small over in europe it's more like 600 um but obviously this is where these tanks are made so this is why they are slightly cheaper over here in europe but um one way or another this is quite an investment but of course it's always an enormous tank this one actually again is a collaboration with the museum in france this time so you can get this one with the original german insignia but also with a french insignia which is quite interesting i don't know what the story of this one is um and yeah there's a ton of functionality there's an interior of course i mean this is you know this is what you this is as far as you can can go with the tank, I think, nowadays. So Kobe has really crushed it here. But of course, 600 bucks, bucks is not too shabby. And then we have also um, a leak or information on another Roman set. Actually, the image that I do have is a bit blurry. The Roman Chariot, 20069. Warbricks has it already listed in their store, but I think nobody really knows when these things will release. My The latest information that I have is we are talking about like October. October, November time frame and I've I've done reporting on all these Roman sets in the last couple of weeks so this is the last one uh, that I have it has two horses um, and uh, one minifigure I guess kind of an officer or I don't know um, aristocrat uh, maybe a senator something like that somebody important is sitting in this chariot the horses are interesting I think I've never seen Kobe horses I don't know they look a bit 
maybe a bit like the Lego Friends horses by means like quite long. I don't know. It it looks it it, it looks not correct. Um I would I would argue. I think there's too much spice between in between the legs, but the legs themselves look very um realistic and authentic. So I think it's yeah, it's it's a nice approach to the topic of making horses. Um looking forward to see them for real. With that, we're moving on to Fun Hole. Here we have a couple of listings of new sets uh, from China. Actually, so that is not the Fun Hole store themselves, the store that is kind of made for the Western market, and of course also not not yet an Amazon listing. So please um, take these all these names, which are more like free translations from the Chinese names in China, um, for, with a grain of salt. I'm pretty sure names will change as soon as we have the fun whole like official sets for the Western market. But I guess these pictures give you already a first idea what is going to come. So let's get started with the next set for the farm series of 9049. This thing will have 867 pieces. Lighting will be included, of course, and we have, um, I do believe, two minifigures and a pet, um, which is actually still missing here. So let's uh, briefly um, throw this in here. Come on, log in. My browser is stuck, so I guess we can't fix the data. Anyhow, problem here. Let's uh, let's not uh, let's continue. Um, so we have this small building, um, and yeah, like I said, it's part of a farm. The, I guess the goal here is to make cheese, and you have a goat, so maybe it's goat cheese, and then you have the farmer and his wife, and they make. What does the sign say? Does it say cheeses or cheesecakes? No, I think it's about cheese. Yeah, I guess they're making goat cheese, something like that. That is what I would guess. It's a nice small building and I should, I think it should go very well with the recent, recent new sets uh, for the farm, like the cow barn and the ones before that, the tractor, etc., etc. If you're more in the Fun Hole Medieval line, um, there are also two new sets. First, the Medieval Forge, the 9040. It's going to have 1,595 pieces, four minifigs, and of course, the lighting is included, as always, with Fun Hole as well. And yeah, I guess it's a Medieval Blacksmith that looks... I would say not exactly like the Lego idea set, but it has a similar vibe, I would argue. I'm pretty sure that all the lighting will give it a very different vibe, if you will, but nevertheless, it has a similar approach. In general, the fun hole design, when it comes to medieval, right, we had the medieval apothecary and a few other buildings, um, the medieval watchtower, I think it was called, they all have like a comic-like, um, kids-friendly castle Lego vibe, I would I would uh, guess, right? It's like this has nothing to do with medieval li live, uh, life in Europe, but it's more like a, a kids, colorful kids interpretation of that. Anyhow, Fun Hole has a very similar design language to that, but yeah, I think it's a blacksmith, so all the Fun Hole lighting should work very well here. And then we have the Medieval Soldier Training Ground, the 9048. Again, please, the names, take them with a grain of salt. Um, so yeah, I think this is supposed to go with the Medieval Watchtower that they did in the past. Relatively small building, but a ton of minifigures in there. I think it's like um, six minifigures, am I correct? Like five regular soldiers and a horse. What is interesting that the horse's tablet, if you will, it's not an extra piece like what Lego does, but it looks more like it's just printed directly on the horse, which is an interesting approach. Um, I'm curious how this is actually going to look, but yeah, here you go. Uh, this should go very well. And I think if you look at the shields, they are basically the same as they were in the other sets. So I guess, uh, yeah, this is just kind of an extension of the previous medieval sets. And the same is true for the Western Railway Station. Of course, this is supposed to go together with the recent, um, with the new uh, Western, what was it called? The Western Train, something like that. Um, let's go to... Uh, Western Freight Train, I'm sorry, that was a 9036, it's already on the market, I've actually built it, very beautiful set, one of the best funnel sets in my box, and now the, they have the railway station to go along with it, also a ton of minifigures in here, five if I'm not mistaken, and it's not a small building, don't underestimate this one, it looks like a very tiny building, but look at the numbers, this is 37 centimeters by 31, so um, for those of you who are in, um, in Imperial, I have no idea how many inches that are, but as a reference, 32 studs. So full base plate is 25 and a half centimeters. So this is like, 
in the ballpark, I guess, of maybe 45 stats, something like that. Not 48, but slightly below that, I guess. So this is not small, right? And it's also 27 and a half centimeters high again. So this is higher than a full base plate is in, in width. This is not a small building and it's very detailed. It has all the lighting included. Um, as typical for funhole, all the floors are tiled. So a lot of pieces went into this. And yeah, like I said, it should go very well together with the Western Train or the other Western sets. So the Western Saloon and the Western Sheriff Office. I think Funnel has here one of the strongest lineups right now when it comes to Western sets. And they're all done with Gobrix pieces. They are all, I think entirely printed not not no no the saloon still had stickers but i think the sheriff office is all printed and the same is true for the train so my guess is the new train station as well the saloon is the oldest set of the line with that we're moving on just a quick note because i think you cannot buy this one outside of Germany, I guess. Um, Kittycraft, it's a German brand. I guess they will go international one day, but at this point in time, they make... I mean, and I think some of these sets already have in parallel English names, so that's why my guess is they will go international one day. But at this point in time, it's more like a local German thing. But um, I think they have a very strong lineup, and I'm really looking forward for them also to go international. KC1304 has been announced. Fish Kutter, it's like a fish trawler, basically, in English. And um, um, Kittycraft is listing these in for 12 bucks. What is interesting about Kittycraft is that they have a minifigure that their own minifigure design. They are generally collaborating with Panlos. So Panlos, I think, is doing all the manufacturing for them. But they have their own minifigure design. And it's a minifigure that is specifically designed to go along uh, all of LEGO's IP rights around minifigures. Because a lot of minifigures have problems, especially over here in Europe. There are not many minifigures that do well. So Funnel has one, Kittycraft has one, Bluebricks has one. But it's, it's a tough market and it's not easy. <laughs> because Lego has a ton of IP over here in Europe. Um, and so I think they put a lot of effort into their sets to be 100% clean. And um, I think the minifigure development is, is one of these ideas. They have a different minifigure vibe, as you can see. Um, it's more like, almost like an anime kind of vibe, but I think they are really beautiful. The print work is amazing. Panlos is doing amazing pet printing work. Um, I would say in some areas even better than Lego. And I think these many figures show there's a lot of love and effort in these designs. But again, purely local German at this point in time. With that, we're moving on to Lego. And here we have only one thing. Uh, icons over the moon with Pharrell Williams. 10391. I do admit I have... To be honest, I had to Google who Pharrell Williams is. So I don't know. Maybe it's not a big thing over here in, in, in Germany or just me. I don't know. I'm more like the kind of Frank Sinatra kind of guy. But uh, anyhow, uh, so um, I cannot say much around the background. But I can talk about the set. The 10391. This thing will have 966 pieces. Too many fix. And it's going to cost you, um, depending... Yeah, it's both in Europe and the US, 110 bucks. Um, you can already pre-order it. Uh, Lego, US, Canada, EU, UK, you name it. And what is interesting, I think, about this set, uh, this set is two things. It means multiple things. First of all, you have, of course, have the spaceship. So I think this could be an interesting set, even for classic space fans. Of course, I'm pretty sure it's, it's a big thing also for Pharrell Williams fans. And I, of course, the set is made because of the movie that Lego is doing so, together with columbia pictures like the life of pharrell williams um so of course that's why they make the set but i think it could also be interesting for classic space fans because it is a spaceship with a certain classic vibe um from a from a brick build construction i'm really curious to see how they made this rocket launch rainbow thingy because it's actually right it's not straight so i think this is something i mean you know this from from mock builders right i mean we all know these amazing mocks where somebody you know threw in a ucs millennium falcon starting like this but um for lego doing a set with that construction that is going to be interesting for sure so i'm really looking forward to that and then there's of course this amazing head collection that they throw in here which is called my friends with a ph like pharrell i mean Nice joke. Anyhow, um, I think this head selection with all the different skin colors is so amazing. I would love to have this thing. 
I would love to have all the hats because I would like to use them, but I think this entire piece looks amazing. So yeah, I don't know. It's in general, I guess, with all the rainbow colors, not really my cup of tea, but in general, I like the idea. I really like it. And I like all the, having all the hats with all the different skin colors. I mean, you know, all, all this amazing variety of humanity is kind of thrown in this and it's done in a very simple and straightforward way and I think it looks amazing. Anyhow, uh, with that we're moving on to Mold King. Here we have a couple of new cars. First, one of the new Technic 1x8 flagships. Um, again, Mold King usually is not bothering to get a license from a car manufacturer. This is why all their sets have so funny names. This one is called the Citroën. Citroën? Citroën? I have no idea how to pronounce this. Um, I think nobody even at No More King knows. Obviously, this is going to be a Citroën. Uh, so, a French car, C4, the 13187. Um, this is a Technic set. Again, 1x8, supercar. So, similar to Lego's recent McLaren P1. 4,606 pieces. This is quite a BMOS. Um, and it's designed by Lucas RS Design, so you can also find this on Rebrickable um, if you want to build it yourself, but you can also just buy the Mold King set. And there's no cheaper way to do this, right? I mean, but we are, for instance, over in China selling this thing for roughly 140 bucks with four and a half thousand pieces. And this is usually when, because it's go, Mold King means Go Bricks Technic material, which is fully on par with, um, I don't know, Lego Technic or uh, Kada, if you ask me. So, yeah, this is amazing stuff, but it comes without a license. So if that is important to you, um, um, then um, then this may not be your set. With that, we're moving on to Mold King Lincoln. Uh, so this is, I guess, a Lincoln, but anyhow, 10118. So this is, again, a Firas Abu Yaba design, i.e. it's a 1x12 car in system brick. So what Lego usually calls a creator expert car, Mold King is doing a ton of these. And very recently, they announced like a bazillion of these cars. I mean, I've done a lot of reporting on these, working with the designer Firas Abu Yaba that, of course, you can also find on Rebrickable and Flickr. Um, it's going to have 1,903 pieces and you can buy this in Asia for around 65 bucks or starting from 65 bucks. Mold King themselves asking for 80, but there are also first retailers going below 70. So, and here we, you are in a three and a half cents a piece ballpark, which is of course quite a bargain. And again, go bricks material. It's so quite good. And then you have the Miura. So obviously this is a Lamborghini, a very well known Lamborghini design. But again, no license, so that's why it has a different name. 10116, again, Fios Abu Yaba design, 1,607 pieces. And you can buy this in Asia for around 55 bucks. <laughs> it's amazing how cheap these things are. Three and a half cents a piece. So, um, and again, Mold King is always doing this, um, if you ask me personally, childish play with a name or rephrasing the name. I mean, everybody knows what this car is, who is into cars, and I guess that is enough. Why doing this, I don't know, Lean Baogini set uh, or name or this Miura name? I mean, it's come, come on, come on, Mold King. That's 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 what kids do. Anyhow, let's move on to the mini underwater exploration ship, um, an Armageddon 1030 design or UR, I think is um, how the designer calls himself. I mean, has different nicknames. I think I use the Armageddon name because that's the name on Rebrickable, but yeah, I may have to change that. Anyhow, 10134. Um, and this is by far not the first one. So Mode King has announced from these, a lot of these tiny ships and also a tiny fitting harbor a building so they have the dock and the tavern and stuff and then like I said they have all these different boats and boat designs. Um, they are very colorful, um, more like I guess kit sets, that's my guess. They are marked as 8 plus but I guess you don't have to be 8 to build this one. Anyhow you can buy this one, the 10134 which is the underwater exploration ship for around uh, 16 to 20 bucks in China. And now comes something interesting, uh, the roller coaster 11014. As you can see, I've put this already on my favorites list. 
uh, over here in the SETIB because I've built the predecessor. So in general, I think I've talked about this in, in recent weeks before, it seems that Mode King is right now working like crazy, basically refining all their sets. So you, so you see a ton of sets from Mode King who have the same number like the previous version, but with an S. So what they're doing here is, um, that's at least our guess, um, that they are replacing all the parts where Lego has IP on over here in Europe. So Lego has like, I think there are like a hundred pieces, not much. There are a couple of pieces in there who are very commonly used, but also a lot of exotic pieces. And for sure, it's not many. I mean, we have thousands of modes in the system nowadays, but on a very small number, Lego has design IP. So a lot of people believe they have it only because it was never contested. The way this works is my understanding over in Europe. Basically, if you have a design, you can go to it. To, it's like a patent, basically, right? You go to a design office and you say, hey, this is my design and I want to have it protected. And then all your competitors have the chance to basically object. And it seems that in recent years, Lego got a lot of this stuff through because none of the competitors competitors. Um, basically objected. This is how they got them all. Um, that's at least my understanding. And one of the reasons, of course, that most of LEGO's competitors are kind of small, very small companies. So they, I guess, don't have a legal department taking care of these things. Anyhow, LEGO has them. And a lot of them are contested right now, but they still have them and they are valid. And so you have to follow them. And as a result, there are a lot of molds including some hilariously often used ones, like the, I think there are even some curved slopes in there. And um, because of that, you are in trouble when you try to sell these in Europe. And so um, I think all, a lot of Chinese brands, so Lego basically has never enforced these. Again, they are a bit of like dodgy from a legal perspective, but last year they started to enforce them. So with retailers, but also when we had the big toy fair this year in, in Nuremberg, which is like the biggest one over here in Europe, where Lego really got in there with their lawyers and made a lot of trouble for some um, Chinese companies. And as a result, you see a lot of Chinese companies right now are reacting to this. And one is, I think, what is happening right now at Mold King. This is why we have all these S sets, which look basically exactly the same. In fact, a lot of retailers are kind of mixing them up. And it, my, um, the guess is that Mold King is basically replacing all the problematic pieces. However, with the roller coaster, the situation seems to be slightly different. By the way, I'm talking about... Uh, just uh, collect, yeah, about the 11012. So this was the roller coaster um, basically from last year. I built this set. It was an amazing set. Um, the price performance ratio is off the charts. Um, it was an amazing roller coaster. It's huge. It's like one meter in diameter. However, it also had a couple of problems. Like basically the cars were not going around the entire track. They got stuck. Um, very often. Um, also the chain it did not make any problems for me but I know also from other folks who had a lot of problems with the chain, like the chain breaking all the time and there are no uh, replacements or spare parts in there. So this set basically had like a couple of rough edges but in general the formula was amazing because this is a huge roller coaster and like I said price performance off the charts so you can see here you can buy these from EU retailers at around I don't know sometimes around 130 and 140 bucks. This includes the full electric system. Everything is in there and 3000 pieces. So this was just an amazing thing, but it kind of didn't work. So like I said, 3000 pieces, a new one now, the 11014 has a different color scheme, presumably different pieces to get out of the way out of, you know, Lego's IP. Um, but it has also 600 pieces more. It looks exactly the same if you look at it, or almost the same, but it has 600 pieces more. So my hope is that uh, Mode King has also refined the set. And I'm going to figure this out. Um, so I definitely intend to build it. Don't know when I have the time, but it's going to happen. And it's going to happen this year, I'm pretty sure. Because like I said, this set was so close of, to being perfect, but you know, roller coaster that doesn't work does not make much sense, right? So anyhow, looking forward to this interesting stuff going on. With that, we're moving on to our reading recommendations. We have two new reviews on the site. So one is uh, the Garfield Fully series by um, Fantasy. So these are actually four sets, like a burrito and a burger and lasagna, of course. I mean, it's Garfield. Um, the most uh, famous cat on the planet. And a Stone Garden from our team did look at four of these sets. So if that is something you're interested in, um, 
Uh, I think these sets are quite interesting. Um, I think I'm not really 100% sure if they have any stickers or if everything is pet printed. There are for sure a ton of prints in there. You have a Garfield minifigure, which looks amazing. I mean, this looks so much like Garfield, right? I mean, look at the face. This dude, um, this is exactly how he should look like. Anyhow, if you're interested in that, um, Stone Gun has done the review. And then there's a second series. Um, Pandasy calls this the Fantastic Machine series. And here we have a review as well. Actually, when I was looking into this one, I was really excited about the fridge because I thought it looked amazing and, and I had all the stuff in there. But Stone Garden was not so happy with this one, especially because all the interior of the uh, fridge is not really attached to any studs. So it's basically flying around. And there are a couple of stickers in there, including stickers across multiple pieces. But nevertheless, there are a couple of very beautiful pieces in there. And actually, look at this coffee or this popcorn machine, because a very similar one we will see later on going through the, all the end ideas entries. With that, we're moving on to news of the week. And one other important thing is that we have... Actually, this is... This is... Uh, this is wrong. This is the... Um, this is a German version. We want, of course, to take a look um, at the English version. We have prices and dates for the third round of the LEGO Bricklink Designer Program. And here we will have five entries. I mean, we did know this before, but, before, but now we do know everything, like the numbers and how many pieces and minifigures, and we know the price. So the Bricklink Designer Program, The Art of Chocolate by Brickister, is going to cost you, I mean, depending on where you live, of course, in the US, it is more expensive actually than in Europe. So in the US, it's 230 bucks. 8.9 cents a piece. Again, if you check out on our site, merlinsbricks.com or setv.org, which is just a redirect to the same site, uh, just go on news, um, then you will find the article. Here I also have, again, all the pictures in there in a decent uh, resolution so and a gallery feature on the website. So I think this is the best way to take a look at all the pictures. I do believe it's even better than on the Bricklink site, but that's just me. Anyhow, all the information is there, including this link here into the set DB entry. As soon as you will be able to purchase these, uh, we will also have the links available. Anyhow, 200. And again, uh, I should switch to the English version. Again, um, 230 bucks for the Brickhester design and then 210 bucks for the Harbour Master's Office by Rich Herbert. Uh, 2,395 pieces makes 8.8 .8 cents a piece. One of my favorites. Actually, my, my biggest favorite is the chocolate, the art of chocolate. I think this should go so well with the Window Village collection by Lego, I do believe. So I think it has really, it has the same charm. It should work very well. Maybe together with the Winter Chalet from the very first Bricklin Designer Program round. This should go very, very well. And then we will have a smaller set, the pro, the Camping Adventure for just 55 bucks. Uh, by King Creations, um, it will have 643 pieces. And then we have 290 bucks. This is, I think, the most expensive expensive one no it is not it's the second expensive most expensive one the lost city uh, by let's go lego brick 3332 pieces and then we have of course we need to have a castle i mean you can't do brick and designer program without a castle and we have the forest stronghold by krakenator 300 bucks on uh, 9.4 cents a piece my personal favorite is the art of chocolate i'm really curious please let me know in the comment section what is yours and if you're interested in this this will start october 8th we will go into the order phase or crowdfunding phase whatever you may call it as always the rules have not been changed by lego you, they need 3000 orders which i think in round one and two was no problem whatsoever um, and then they will go up to 30,000 units, which usually only three out of five uh, made, if I recall correctly, in the last two rounds. But I think this should go very well. Anyhow, with that, we're moving on to LEGO Ideas. Here, LEGO confirmed now that the famous Disney Pixar Luxo Junior lamp is actually going to be an idea set. I think this was from, and again, I'm on the German version. I really, I marked the wrong links. Anyhow, um, I think this was from, what did I say? Second review phase 
2023. And I think if they, back in the day, they do this from time to time, they said, yeah, we want to do it. It's kind of selected. However, there are certain things we need to clarify. I guess it's IP stuff. Or maybe they wanted to figure out, hey, can we actually make this one? Because as you may recall, the foosball table was going very, very wrong. So um, I don't know if they wanted to check technicalities or legal stuff, who knows. Anyhow, they have now finally confirmed this thing is going to happen, which I think is good news. I always like the lamp. And then with that, we're moving on again, uh, let's switch the language uh, to the new LEGO Ideas round. This is the second 2024 round. So 35 designs have made it into this round. 35, like three, four years ago, this would have been a very large number, but keep in mind, let me just scroll here on the Ideas tag. If you go into previous rounds, like for instance, the first 2023 round, which I think still holds the record with 71 designs. Um, but even all the rounds after that were beyond 40. Um, but now we are less than 40 again, which is fine. I mean, Lego is selecting two or three. They will not select any anything else. So I guess at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if it's 20 or 40. Um, there's good stuff in there. And I think that is all that matters. So what I've done uh, is um, this is new. I've changed on the side a little bit the structure. Because I always, I never really liked how Lego is presenting these uh, on their blog site. The images are relatively small, don't have a good resolution. Plus, it's not so easy to browse through them. So that's why I've changed my structure here. I have now a table with all the products or projects or whatever you might call it or entries are in there, both with the name. There's a link directly on the entry. And there is a link to um, the... Uh, the author and the ideas profile and if you click on the thumbnail here you will get a full screen pictures I mean I mean I cannot do anything better than the original material sometimes the res resolution on Lego site is simply not there but uh, now you we, you can use the gallery feature of our site and that means just by clicking through buttons for instance or swiping on the tablet stuff like that you can go through them and I think that's much easier and here on the down below you have the title and the again the ideas profile so i think that is a much easier way to go through this and so yeah that's actually what we're going to do now instead of mocks of the week because here we have first the market village by jk brick amazing design really loving it pretty sure lego will never do it because i don't, I don't think that they will do anything else with castle in in ideas nowadays i think they would go for icons in this case but it is an amazing design uh, and plus, Lego has just done the market. However, if you look at this and compare this to the recent market set, I would go for this one like any day. Uh, it, 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 has, it has a certain unorganized vibe. It looks really beautiful. Um, it is free, it's a free form mark, which I always prefer compared to, I don't know, base plate stuff. So yeah, it looks amazing, but I'm pretty sure it's close to in the six a three thousand piece ballpark. Actually, it looks like more than three thousand pieces to be honest. Um, but I guess the designer was correct here. And then we have uh, the Lego Z8 One working and functional thirty five millimeter film camera by Zung ninety two. This one is interesting. So first of all, of course, Lego is doing a lot of gadgets in ideas. Um, they just did recently the Polaroid camera. Plus, I mean. I just I just said in this morning in the German version of this podcast. I mean, there is so many people who are willing to pay eight thousand bucks for a Leica, which is a German thing, by the way. And you know, but there are also I think a lot of camera enthusiasts who can't afford eight thousand bucks for a camera. So let's assume you can say, hey, we have a collaboration with Leica, and Leica is collaborating with a lot of camera uh, companies. I mean, you can get the Leica brand on a small. On a, on, a, on a cheap smartphone nowadays. So why not collaborate with Leica? I think this could be an amazing collaboration. And you know, you could go with all these people who cannot afford um, to buy a camera for so many bucks, for so much money, and just, you know, give them a hundred bucks camera. Sounds like a bargain. Anyhow, uh, could be interesting. And then we have the Tintin, a space rocket by TKL86. Uh, I think there was a comic series back in my childhood, Tim and Struppi, I think it was called. I don't know if that is the correct English name. In German, it was Tim und Struppi. Um, but they had rockets exactly like these. And um, I would I would really love Lego making one of these. Um, looks amazing. Reminds me of my childhood. Good stuff. And then we have the working image projector, Magic Lantern by Norder. Something like this was recently done by Fantasy. I think they called it like... Oh, the the... 
nostalgic projector, film projector, I don't know, retro film projector, something like that. And they had also electric pieces in there. They had basically this functioning version as it is shown here. Um, but I'm pretty sure, I mean, just remind, you know, just think about the lighthouse. I think if Lego has to do something with electronics and new parts for that, it's going to be beyond, you know, off the charts when it comes to price. So I don't think that Lego will do it, but it's a great idea. I like the design, awesome stuff. And then we have the hydroelectric, hydroelectric power plant by Baron von Baron, which is a cool name. Um, and yeah, amazing design. Really like it. Lots of detail. Really like the building because look at the building. The entire wall has only one color and it's using a ton of masonry brick, which, which is not easy. Most designers fail to do this correctly, but I think this looks really, really cool. I guess it's because it's so small. Um, that is why it works, um, but it is a brilliant design, I do believe, but it also has also a lot of fun in there, like, you know, this the kit playing with, with its model boat or sailboat. Um, really like the idea and looks amazing. And this is a popcorn machine by Dimex Art I was talking about. So this is basically the set that you can already buy from Fantasy, uh, very similar. Uh, same idea, the, the design of course looks great. Um, not sure if Lego will do it though. And then you have Wednesday the Room and the Balcony by Airbricks95. I guess this has a pop culture reference that I'm missing again. Um, and I guess you need to be a fan of the reference to to really dig this. Um, so I really don't understand the set, to be honest, because I don't understand the reference. But yeah, I guess if you're into this, this may be for you. And then we have Bob's Old Tugboat by Con Conaira. I'm not sure I got, I got this wrong. Um, and this thing looks amazing. I mean, we had something like this in the Brooklyn Designer program. It was a fishing trawler, but I guess the design language was similar. The concept was similar. So I don't think that this is what Lego will do, but uh, it is amazing design. Really love it. Um, um, it just, I don't know, it has like a, it has like, it has simply a, a warm and charming look to it. Um, I, I have no better way to describe it. Looks really amazing. Cool minifigures included as well. Uh, amazing. And then we have again a Lisbon or Lisbon tram, Electrico 28 by Mega Caution Smaller. I don't know how many of these I've already seen in, in ideas and, and other programs. I think that a lot of people really love this thing. Um, I've actually never been to the city, but I, I guess I have to. I guess the tram must be amazing. And yes, the color scheme is, is, is great. Don't know. I mean, I think more of these I have seen in, for instance, ideas than, for instance, even of the San Francisco tram. And I would always guess this is a more well-known one. But anyhow, um, it is a beautiful design. Would love to have this one in my city. And then we have the claw machine by 2A2A. I think I've never done this as a kid, but I always wanted. And yeah, I think this thing is really... I mean, obviously, if you if you want to do the set, you need a function, right? This thing needs to work, at least to a certain degree. And I think this design here does not. But if if you could design this, like, I don't know, JK Brickworks, maybe this is something for you. <laughs> if, if you could make this work, this would be amazing. So, so amazing. Because I think there are so many kids who have either tried and failed horribly or never tried, like me. Uh, who would love to have this to, you know, train uh, at home. And with that, we're moving on to the tennis match by Bricky Brick. Uh, cool building. I mean, it's quite large. It's like, I don't know how much is that, like 64 by 32 stats, something like that. Um, what I really like about this is the tennis match itself. I think it's a beautiful design, A, and B, I would so love to have this from Lego. I, I've never really understood why they're not doing more with their modular building connection because having like, um, I don't know, add-on packs for the modular building connection, like this tennis court or parking locks, lots or park, like again, 32 by 32 start on a base plate with some extra stuff, something that you can put in between. And they can do this as an extra set, right? Next to the modular building collection. I mean, it's personally for me totally fine that they do only one per year, that's cool. But, you know, maybe in addition, Lego every two years, kind of an extension pack, like this tennis court or, I don't know, they have done a lot of soccer in recent years and even a foosball table, which was, I think, a horrible mistake on their side. But I think I would love to have the tennis court. Never played tennis myself, but I would love to have it. With that, we're moving on to Pioneer CDJ2000, the Nexus multiplayer by Tommaso. I don't know, I've looked on the at this for a very long time and I do believe... <sighs> The thing is, it looks really cool, I do believe. Um, but 
I, I think it is something at the end of the day, it feels like the bricks are just a surface for a bazillion prints at the end of the day, right? I think this thing would look completely boring without all the prints. And I think that should not be the idea of brick build, right? Or, or well, bricks in general. I mean, the idea of stickers and prints is to extend the set, detail it more, but I think this one here needs it. Without it, it's going to look very, very boring. And I think that is kind of the problem that I have. And don't get me wrong, I don't have a better idea. I do believe some of these buttons, and as you, and you can see, this has already been done, like on the top left of the turntable. Um, some of these buttons you could simply do with colorful pieces without prints and anything, but... I don't know. I think I think there this set needs prints and needs too many. That's my problem that I have with it. But in general, amazing design by Tommaso. With that, we're moving on to the blacksmiths. Wide West by Lucky, uh, or Lucky. I don't know. It's with two L. How to pronounce that? I have no idea. Lego Lucky, my, maybe or Lucky with Lego. Anyhow, it's a blacksmith, a uh, western blacksmith, and I really like that they also have this outside part because a lot of these blacksmiths were primarily doing horseshoes, right? And if you want to do horseshoes, but also a lot of other stuff, especially if it's hot, you don't want to do this inside the building. A lot of mocks and designs and even many sets that represent a blacksmith, too, too much stuff is happening on the inside. Like, like it, it almost happens like the work is done in the living room. This is how it feels sometimes. And I think this one here is much more authentic, at least from that point of view. Uh, the, the roof for my... I don't know. I'm not really a big fan of the roof design. Too many tiles for my ties. But in general, really beautiful design by Lucky. Um, yeah, and why not do Western ideas? I mean, they kind of revived Castle through ideas, so maybe why not do Western? However, nowadays, you know, with culture wars and everything going on, I don't know if a Western set is something that you really want to do. Maybe, I don't know. I'm not really into that, but... Um, this could be an issue. With that, we're moving on. Wallace and Gromit, a grand day out by Vico. Um, yeah, I guess this is one of those sets again. You need to be a Wallace and Gromit fan, and then this will work for you. Would be really curious, though, if Lego would make this egg, I would call it, but I guess it's a rocket. Um, I, I'm really curious how the building techniques would be. I mean, the idea's globe was really amazing from that point of view, so I would love to see how Lego would do this act um, from a building technique perspective. Then we have Italian Riviera by Lego Paradise. I think we had one, one very similar or similar idea and concept in the recent Brickling Designer Program. I think it was round two, wasn't it? So that's why I don't think that Lego will pick it up for ideas, but it's a brilliant design. It's beautiful. It's colorful. It feels like vacation in Italy. And I've just been in Italy very recently. So yeah, really, I would love that. I would love to have a set like this. However, like I said, I think it's already covered by Brickling. And with that, we're moving on to the Humpback Whale, a breach uh, by 2x4. Uh, what a cool nickname. And yeah, I think it's a, it's a cool design. Uh, the way it looks quite authentic. It looks a bit long in the nose area. Is, it, is this called a nose? I mean... I don't know, the front section of, of the whale. Uh, what is it called, actually? Because it's not a nose. This is not where whales have their noses. But anyhow, or they are, their breathing holes or whatever it is called. But I don't know, it looks a bit... I mean, I know this is how these um, humpback look, but I don't know, some, something feels wrong. What I really do like is that the entire design seems to work without any prints or stickers. Um, even the eyes are not using one of these ridiculous one-by-one -one round tiles, but is using uh, one by one plate with an open start, which I think is a much better fit, all in all, very authentic, cool design. And then we have the New Holland uh, Combine uh, by Yellow Style. And yeah, I mean, I would love for LEGO to make one of these, like an authentic, large uh, system build. I mean, they're doing all these cars in Creator Expert. Why not do, a, you know, a Combine Harvester? This would be so amazing. And yeah, it could be the ideas team happy for um, to do this or see this also under icons, creator expert, whatever you might call it. And then we have another um, art, piece of art, The Impression Sunrise by a Monet by Hun Shui Mo Yu. Personally, not the biggest Monet fan, so that's why this is, the, the image itself is not my cup of tea, but I think the brick design is amazing. <clears throat> You cannot really see this on this picture, but it has this 3D aspect. So this thing is actually pretty deep. 
Um, um, but uh, yeah, I think it's it's a cool representation. Again, the artist, the original artist, is not really mine, but um, still pretty cool. And then we have the modular modular post office in neoclassical style by Uber Toys. Yeah, this is one of these sets where I'm pretty sure LEGO will never do it. Um, it's a modular and I, they don't have to do it in under ideas. has no license. Um, but hey, here you go. Congratulations to Uber Toys for uh, getting this in. And then we have the Iron Giant in the forest by Hachi, Hachi Roku 24 Pretty sure I pronounced this wrong. My apologies from ignorance and yeah i think uh, we had many of these in the ideas program it is a it is a great design here again as well i like the entire concept it's it's quite tight um it is again a free flow mark or free form mark it's not on a base plate or anything like that you know the boys there the cars there the robot is there it's pretty cool personally i don't like the trees that much they're a bit simple too straight simply um, even the size, I think you can do better, but the robot itself is very well designed. Um, so cool stuff. And then we have the vintage radio. Listen to your favorite music. Um, we had two TVs in, in a similar fashion by Fantasy. Um, so yeah, I really like the Fantasy set. I like this design here as well. However, you know, if LEGO wanted to do a gadget um, in this round, I guess they would go for the camera and try to collaborate with Leica. That is my guess because I think this would be a, a match made in heaven. Um, but yeah, here you go, uh, Vintage Radio. And then we have a Snoopy design. Snoopy, I think it's from a license perspective, maybe not what LEGO wants to move into because the license um, has been given to so many companies that there are like a bazillion Chinese sets with the Snoopy license. So I think LEGO doesn't want to enter this. Yes, of course, it's separate things, but still I think more people would compare it um, to the competition. I mean, Blue Bricks also here has now, is now throwing out a ton of Snoopy sets. I did report on those. You have a lot of Chinese brands. Some of these are really amazing. So I think this would be very tough competition, but nevertheless, the Snoopy Campfire by Boss of DOS 64. <laughs> amazing design. Uh, and then, yes, we have the Sony Walkman. I think this one also would be really, really cool as a brick built gadget. Um, would fit very well with Lego. So I think this one has very good chances. Um, and yeah, Sony Walkman. I mean, I'm a kid of the 80s. So I never had a real Walkman. I think my sister had one. I never had one. I mean, I had other brands like later on, but I was a bit too young. But my older sister, I think she had an original. Anyhow, it's a Sony Walkman and it's it's amazing. It's like the Discman. I think the Walkman is even more like iconic than the Discman is, but it's an iconic industrial design. And I think, yeah, it is a lot of um, entertainment industry history. With that, we're moving on to the loneliness of the Voyager. NASA's Voyager mission by Cute. Heckler 36, again, beautiful design, a uh, cool concept, really like the idea, you know, with all the planets and the sun, not really sure if the size fits, I mean, I think the, uh, the author here or the designer really went out of his way to get the size as close as possible to reality but of course was also hindered by the brick system but in general i think um this was a, is a cool concept cool idea and i think lego could do a better sun i mean they have now create do, done these pieces for uh for the um what was it called you know what i mean right the the Sun and Earth system set that they did a couple of months ago. By the way, by far not as good as JK Brickworks design that you can buy from Kata, just as an FYI. But anyhow, Lego has now a piece for the Sun, so I guess they could do it. And Voyager is an interesting piece. I mean, it's it's both by you know by the scientific scientific community, it's very well known, but also by the you know science fiction community, you know, with all its roles that it had in science fiction as well. So Voyager, I think, is an interesting piece, and it should should fit fit very well into the Lego strategy. And then we have Tetris Solid by Victor. Victor Way 300, this thing is amazing. I mean, it's like, it's a Tetris game that works in bricks. I mean, how cool is that? Um, will Lego make one? I think Lego would shrink it down like crazy. I think this thing has a lot of pieces, a ton of pieces in there, it's very large. So Lego would make it, maybe make it half the size. And I'm not sure if it would work out. Maybe they, they could work out something with Nintendo and then maybe do a Tet mini Tetris Game Boy scenario. Yeah, maybe something like that. But in ideas, a Tetris game like this, I would love to have it. Um, big fan. 
but I mean, it's just it's just an amazing idea, isn't it? It's so cool. And then we have another avatar um, uh, entry. I think we have seen uh, avatar entries into ideas um, a ton. Don't think that Lego would do. I mean, if they ever want to pick up Airbender, I think the time is not right for d doing this with ideas. But it's it's a beautiful design by Firecracker. Then we go to the Malad by Ambient Ambient Five Twenty Three. Um, yeah, it is a brick build pet. To be honest, not really my cup of tea. Too many stats, by far too many stats. So not really mine. But con congratulations, making ten thousand votes. And then we have the floating sea otter by his brick materials. This is really, this is a design I really love. It's it's so much joy, so much fun. I like the brick design itself. The water with the tiles look beautiful, and then the otter. I mean, how cool is this dude, right? Like playing in the in the water. It feels so playful and so authentic. And it's it's kind of the kind of set. If you see it, you have to smile, right? I mean, I'm not really sure if I like the brick design around the nose or the snout. But next to that is just it is a design that makes you smile. I mean, I'm smiling right now. This is this is all you can ask from a brick set. With that, we're moving on to Arsenal FC from the Invincibles or Arsenal FC, the Invincibles by Petras. So I guess if you're into Arsenal, that is in London, isn't it? Ooh, I'm really not into. I I know I'm a German and European and everything, but I'm not that much into soccer to be honest. But anyhow, if you are into soccer. Uh, Arsenal Stadium. And by the way, yes, it's called soccer. With that, we're moving on. Um, actually, in German, it's Fußball, um, which is interesting because I think Americans call the soccer table a uh, Fußball table, which is interesting. Why are you using this word for that? But okay, why not? Anyhow, um, but what the British call soccer is what we Germans call Fußball, just as an FYI, because Fuß is the foot. Working River Rapids Ride, Fairground raf Rafting Coaster by Baron von Baron again. And yeah, this is, I mean, this thing is so amazing. Um, but the question is, would Lego ever do it? And the, could they do it? And are they willing to put in the work and the pieces needed to make this thing as beautiful as it is here? So this is like, okay, this is something that would, uh, would I would like to see as a mark. But I think, quite honest, this is something that Lego cannot do because if they do it, this would this set would be like 400 bucks. And this is a problem, right? Um, but I would just love to have it. But maybe that is a design that is more for, a, I don't know, Chinese brand or so because... Lego couldn't make it for, for a reasonable price. That's just what I think. But it is a beautiful design. I uh, would love to have it. And if this thing, you know, would work and has a good technical mechanism inside that is not too loud, like, for instance, uh, the Prairie Dog sets from Kada, that is a JK Brickworks design. The One of the beautiful things about this design is that the technique is, is, is constructed in a way that it's not that loud, which I personally, at least for me, that makes a huge difference. I think there are some technical constructions I've seen that are unbearable when it comes to you know all the noises and then there are some who just you know run smooth simply because of the construction and if you do this well and this thing moves at a reasonable point and then you maybe throw in like a brick max or light tailing light kit oh my god this would be so amazing um with that we're moving on to bluey by monkey scout again this is something of course that is based on a license um and yeah if you're into that um this will be for you. The brick design itself, of course, is, you know, oriented towards uh, the reference. So it's not that interesting. But we're moving on to Downtown Abbey. Hyde Clue Castle by Bro3. So if you're into a British, modern British castle, then this may be for you. Kada has done um, uh, Westminster in recent years, which is an amazing set. Um, but I think this one here looks pretty cool as well, and of course, it would have a ton of minifigures, like the entire staff and everything in there, which would be a challenge. And then we have Bob Ross, The Joy of Painting by Brick Ape. Bob Ross is so interesting because I'm pretty sure this was never like in German TV, but still everybody knows him, which is cool. Like, I, I, this is kind of, you know, the beauty of American pop culture that, you know, sometimes it just go to, goes to Europe and nobody really knows why. Um, but anyhow, I mean, I think he's very well known. And however, next to this reference, which is amazing, and the brick design by Brick Ape here is just beautiful. I mean, of course, I'm pretty sure the picture was altered a bit and I, I'm guilty of that as well like throwing in some contrast this is something that I do a lot with my pictures that I 
that I do. And I think this designer here as well, like said, okay, let's crank up the contrast. So this thing really pops. Um, but I think, yeah, I can't help it. It looks beautiful. Um, would love to have this. This is like my personal favorite of this line. I would really love Lego to make it. And then we have Gravity Falls, it's a mystery shack by Mini Bricks Productions. And this is again, one of these, I mean, it has a reference, but it also looks beautiful on its own. Um, so yeah, it is, it is an amazing piece. Really love it. Um, and what else is to say? It, it looks like it has everything that it needs to have. And that is that is perfect. And it's not such a big set. I'm pretty sure, I mean, Lego would simplify it. They could do this with less than 1,500 pieces, maybe even 1,200, something like that, which I think is exactly what Lego is trying to look for because, you know, Lego stuff gets ridiculously expensive if they go larger than this. And then we have the Coldplay Music of the Spheres World Tour Diorama by Mickey Denden. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. It's it's a cool and interesting design. Personally, I'm not so much into into going to concerts anymore. I stopped doing this like 25 years ago. I think it's almost like 30 years ago. Oh, unbelievable how old I am. But um, if this is your cup of tea and or if you're into Coldplay, this may be for you. It's kind of a fan set for Coldplay fans, right? Um, but I think that is always a big issue with that. I think that is also mostly the folks who would buy this. Uh, I mean, they can do this, but they need a lot of pop cultural reference um, in order to in order to do this. Um, and yeah, here we go. That was thirty five product ideas. Let me know in the comments in the comment section if that was okay for you that I do these ideas. Uh, this week, I think they have a lot of, they're important, right? Because Lego will definitely pick some of them. On the other side, you cannot buy them compared to mocks from Rebrickable. So I don't know, it has a lot of pros and cons. I cannot do both in, in, in a series or in a week for sure. So hopefully that is fine for you. And I will try to make it up next week with maybe, if I can, a little bit more mocks of the week action. With that, we are done for the week. I hope you like the show as always. I would really love wherever you listen to this, watch this. Um, I think this episode will go beyond one hour, so I can't upload it on TikTok. But you, of course, as always, you can see and hear this on every podcast platform, even the video form I will upload on Spotify, YouTube, of course. Wherever you are, rate, comment, like, subscribe, follow. I don't know, it's called on every, different on every platform, but I would really love to have your support here and with that thanks for listening see you next week